Hello everyone and welcome back to Comic Vantage and for today's episode we are back with another preview spotlight and yes this is for all the new books that you and your retailers should be reading and buying coming up in July 2019. So let's get started we got a lot of books uh, we're gonna start right off in DC like we do every month. DC has a really good showing this month which is to me is surprising so all right let's start right off with what do we got here batman curse of the white knight issue number one yes this is a sequel to the white knight and we have asriel making an appearance we have this cool variant asriel cover coming out so that looks like a lot of fun oh and then we have this whole year of the villain thing going on dc promises that 2019 will be the year of the villain Starting in July, they are doing variant covers for all of their Year of the Villain tie-ins. And these variant covers are supposed to have really cool cardstock covers and then, you know the whole virgin or the minimal trade dress that they do. So it'd be really cool to see what's coming out. I'm going to show a lot of these because there are some really, really good ones that I'm pleasantly surprised with. All right, first off, let's get right into this. Batman Universe number one. This is a new series coming out from Brian Michael Bendis, available to comic shops for the first time. So this should be a lot of fun. Uh, following the theft of a priceless Fabergé egg, the Riddler leads the Dark Knight on a wild hunt. So that sounds cool. We also have Superman Up in the Sky number one, written by Tom King, art by Andy Kubert and Sandra Hope. They actually make a pretty good team, so I'm really excited to see that. Like I said, we got a lot of books I'm going to be showing here. Wonder Woman, Come Back to Me, issue number one. I'm not even sure what we got. We have Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti, art by Chad Hardin. Available to comic shops for the first time. I'm not quite sure what that means. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments down below. I mean, were these available digitally before? If they were, I have no idea. Okay, what else do we got? Oh. This sounded really interesting. Collapser number one. And this is the story of Liam James, who wakes up and he has a black hole in his chest, which gives him incredible superpowers. Really interesting. No idea where that's going to go, but it sounds like fun. Also coming out in July from the DC Young Animal line, Doom Patrol, Way to the World's number one. So we have a new Doom Patrol series coming out. So that should be fun as well. Uh, what else do we go? Oh. Jimmy Olsen number one. This looks kind of interesting because what do we got here? Jimmy Olsen must die. And then it says, wait, we're getting ahead of ourselves. And it goes through, it tells this whole time traveling romp through space adventure of Jimmy Olsen. And, it says, and then we kill him. So yeah, there we go. Fun stuff. <laughs> All right. Lois Lane number one. Lois Lane coming out with her own series. Beautiful Jenny Friesen variant cover right there going on. So really excited for that one. Uh, what am I doing here? Oh, it's taking me over to the website. Woohoo, don't want to do that. And jumping ahead, what do we got here? Batman Beyond number 34. I'm spotlighting this just because of this gorgeous variant cover, and a lot of people are cover chasers out there. I can't blame you when it comes to covers like this. And next one up, Batman issue number 75. This is a year of the villain, The Offer. And I guess this whole storyline is right now we're starting with The Offer, where Lex Luthor is going around meeting up with all these villains and making them an offer. And we're going to see who is going to take it and who is not. Again, showing this because beautiful Bane virgin cover. Look at that. Man, that's amazing. Oh, and it's an exercise anniversary issue. Five bucks. Cardstock variant is $5.99. So they are upping the cardstock variant by a dollar. I mean, can't blame them. Marvel used to do it back in the 90s with their regular and their deluxe editions, where the deluxes were like a buck more expensive. Don't know why they stopped that. Anyway, we also have Catwoman here. Another one. This is part of the Year of the Villain, the Offer series. And. Beautiful Art Germ variant cover right there. That's actually some of his better work. It, you know, everybody says that all of his covers look exactly the same. They look like Supergirl and cosplay on every single one. This does not look like Supergirl and cosplay to me. That actually is really nice. I like that. Oh, the next one, Deceased number three. Of course, Deceased number three is just a fun story. Everybody should be grabbing this, but 
that's why I wanted to show it right there. We have the final of the Trinity covers. Look at that. Oh, that Wonder Woman cover is amazing. My wife actually ordered me to buy this so we can hang this cover up in the house. And then we have the horror movie homage variant cover. Looks like The Nun, I believe that's ripping off there. I'm sorry, homage. <laughs> All right, next up, what do we got here? The next one I wanted to show, another year of the villain. This is the Harley Quinn issue. And again, beautiful cover. And this is Frank Cho. I mean, what? That does not look like typical Frank Cho artwork. I mean, unless they got this wrong, it says right there, variant cover by Frank Cho. So... I, I don't know what to make of that because that's really, really cool. Not typical Frank Cho artwork again. All right, and then we have Red Hood and the Outlaw. Again, another A Year of the Villain offer. Book is $3.99. Cardstock variant cover, $4.99. Who is doing Yasmin Putri? Right there. Beautiful variant cover on this one. And the storyline of this book sounds really, really cool. It says, what can Lex Luthor offer former sidekick Jason Todd? He can offer him sidekicks. Broken, battered, and catastrophically dangerous sidekick. I'm sorry, catastrophically dangerous sidekicks. Teen Titans, they're not. So that should be a lot of fun. And what else we have here? Year of the Villain, Teen Titans number 32. Look at that Lobo cover. Tell me that is not amazing. God, that's beautiful. Seriously, even if you're not reading Teen Titans, that is worth it just for the cover. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. All right, I have one more I wanted to show. Do, do, do. I believe you are it. Yes, Wonder Woman issue number 75. Again, look at this beautiful cheetah cover. Another one, it's Jenny Friesen, and it's another one that doesn't look like typical artwork from her. So we have an art germ, a Frank Cho, and a Jenny Friesen. Just don't look like their work, but man, they are amazing. So yes, totally. Those are going to be the big books for July of 2019 from DC Comics. All right, next up, we have the Marvel Catalog. And we have this whole House of X thing going on this month with Jonathan Hickman writing a couple different stories. I honestly don't know what to make of this so far. Just looking at this quick cover here, I mean, what the hell? Is I think this is supposed to be Professor Xavier in the front. I don't even know what's happening there. Is he like, I don't know, is he joining the residence? I mean, what's happening? So, hey, show my age there if you actually get that reference. <laughs> All right, so anyway, let's get started right away. First up, this I'm really, really excited about. We have the Marvel's Epilogue, which is a brand new story coming out from Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross. And it is following the adventures of Phil Sheldon again. And he's now retired, and these are the stories of him and his daughters. You know, if you never read Marvel's back in the 90s, wow, this series came out and nothing had ever been done like this before, where it was actually focusing on one individual and his stories in the outside world of all these superheroes, and it was beautifully painted by Alex Ross. I mean, you had these gorgeous acetate covers. I mean, it was insane. It was so good. Oh, and it's still good to this day. If you haven't had a chance to read it, please do. All right, and then we're going to jump right into the House of X here. Issue number one of six. Superstar writer Jonathan Hickman returns, takes on the reins of the X-Men universe. Uh, yada, yada. Xavier reveals his master plan for mutant kind. One will that bring mutants out of the shadow of mankind and into the light once more. So, like I said, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm... I don't know, I've kind of been disillusioned with the X-Men as of late, which is really sad for me, because I, the X-Men is what I grew up with. I love the X-Men. I read them all. And, yeah, I know lately it's just been kind of a little on the boring side. So, and we have Magneto here popping back into his white costume. We have Jean Grey going back into her Marvel Girl suit. So, yeah, I mean, it might be fun. Who knows? And then we have this Powers of X story also coming out. Again, Jonathan Hickman taking the reins. And let's see what we got here. I don't know. 
But hey, it looks rather interesting. Looks like a group of X-Men we haven't seen before. So this should be interesting. That looks like Magic Soul Sword mixed with actually Colossus. Almost like a... Wow, weird. All right, that should be kind of fun. Along with this whole month, we have graphic boxes. Now, I don't know if people out there are enjoying these graphic boxes or not. They were, um, when I first saw them, I was like, oh God, these are amazing. After owning about, oh, I don't know, a half a dozen of these boxes in the last year or two, um, they're junk. They are really, really crap. They are thin, they are flimsy, they fall apart. I have the Phoenix box, and like a month after having it, it popped at the seam, completely destroyed itself. The DC ones are no better. I mean, God, they're so flimsy. Anyway, they're horrible boxes, guys. Just stick to BCW and just, I don't know, draw them yourself like uh, Tats Comics does. He actually does some really cool work on his boxes. All right, but we do have this X-Men vinyl poster by Mark Brooks coming out. Ooh, vinyl poster. <laughs> All right, now this looks kind of interesting. We have Mark Wade helming the history of the Marvel Universe, which looks like a lot of fun. It really is supposed to tell the story of the whole Marvel Universe. We're coming in six issues, and wow, we have some off-the-wall characters showing up. I mean, this is supposed to tell the story of everything. It's supposed to be completely illustrated. So... This might be a lot of fun. This looks like another story that looks to be a blast. We have Loki number one coming in, hot off of the War of the Realms story. So, Earth's Mightiest Hero, all new ongoing series. After dying a grisly death in the War of the Realms, Loki learned a valuable lesson in warmongering. Don't get caught. <laughs> So now I guess he has to do some payback here, some retribution for, or not retribution, but uh, some restitution for being such an awful, awful person. All right, next up, what do we got here? This looked really good as well. We have Valkyrie number one coming out. Why does it look so good? Jane Foster, after she died, became a Valkyrie. So, so far she's been all over the place and this should be really interesting to see. You know, no one ever stays dead in comic books and Jane Foster's no different. And then we have Iron Man number 14. Now, I am not spotlighting Iron Man number 14. I just wanted to show off this cool card. No, I didn't. 2020 approaches. They are still pushing this. Now, people, jump on Machine Man issue number one and Machine Man issue number two. Those are our first appearances of Arno Stark, who are Machine Man 2020. I really think they're pushing this guy for an MCU appearance. Like, you know, calling it. So there we go. Invisible Woman getting her own series. So this should be a little interesting. We have this weird, I think this is Adam Hughes artwork because it looks really odd. And Adam Hughes artwork as of late really hasn't been, I don't know, all that appealing. So, hey, there you go. All right, Death's Head, issue number one of four. We have our favorite merc intergalactic mercenary here. So this should be a lot of fun. Death Head was a great character. If you haven't read Death's Head, he's really cool. A blast. I'm excited to see him coming back. Now this is intriguing. The, this is intriguing me like nobody's business. We have Arrow number one. Now, if I'm not mistaken here, Arrow and we have Swordmaster number one, both coming out in July of 2019. Now, what's so interesting about Arrow and Swordmaster here? Now, as you can see, it is very manga and anime influenced. Now, these are two superheroes coming from China. It says here, Catch the Wave, an all new ongoing series. And this is supposed to be the first time these are making American debuts. Yes, you heard that correctly. So I was curious about all these little blurbs and the information I was finding here, so I went and did some research. Turns out these are two characters created by a Chinese company called NetEase Comics, and they are a digital comic book company, and Marvel has partnered with them to bring some of their characters to the U.S. You heard that correctly. Not only that, but I guess in return marvel is sending more stuff to china because china is huge in the superhero business right now i mean they are going insane over it so i think you know marvel is just trying to increase its market share in china to get more comic books sold since you know the digital wave killed comic books for us here in the u.s and nobody's reading them anymore <laughs> that's why it's important you guys read your comic books go and pre-order them 
support your local stores. All right, so these actually sound like a lot of fun. I'm really excited to see where they go with this. Next up, we have a lot of new facsimile editions coming out. I guess these things have been insanely popular. You know, Marvel tests the water, one or two here. Oh, this month, July, we have Giant Size X-Men number one. Now, if you don't know what a facsimile edition is, it is a perfect duplicate of the original, including the ads. So, Giant Size X-Men number one, if you don't want to break the bank, getting yourself a CGC 9.8, get yourself a CGC 9.8 facsimile edition. <laughs> All right, then we have New Mutants 98 facsimile edition also coming out this month. And then we have X-Men number one, the issue that started it all. Pencils by Jack Lee, or Jack Kirby, cover by Jack Kirby, written by Stan Lee. This is the thing right here, guys. And then we also have X-Men number 137, Phoenix Must Die. And this we have Chris Claremont and John Byrne doing their thing. These facsimile editions are really, really cool. They're a lot of fun. And let's go ahead and jump ahead here. Ecstatic coming back. I figured this might make a couple people happy. And it's coming back with the original creative team of Peter Milligan and Michael Alred. So, you know, it's funny. For a long time after, like, the late 90s, early 2000s, I got out of comic books. And I walk into a comic book store one day and I see... This Mike Alred artwork on an X-Men comic book. And I'm like, what is the, what? This guy's doing Madman. And then, you know, it's really cool. So what else do we got? We have, oh, this looks like a lot of fun. This is Wolverine and Captain America Weapon Plus issue number one. And this is going to delve into both of their backstories and show you how their experiments were interconnected. It looks like the Super Soldier Serum eventually became the Weapon X program. So, that is going to be very, very cool. And we only have one more book left for Marvel to show, and that is Wolverine vs. Blade Special. I just like this cover. I mean, God, that's amazing. Look at that. And I think that is the regular cover, and then here is the variant. And I think the regular cover is better than the variant this time around. So... Yeah. All right, guys. So that is our Marvel previews guide for the month. And these are the books that are coming out June 2019. All right. And now for the last segment of our video here, we have the big book. Now, the big book encompasses all of the companies that are left, which is my favorite section because this is all the indie stuff. And I love it. Indie comic books. All right, so let's start. Let's jump right on ahead. They had like the first 50 pages of this thing are always filler. So we're going right to page 55. <laughs> All right, Sea of Stars number one. This is a new series coming out from Image Comics. And we have being a space trucker sounds like a cool job, but in reality, it can be boring as hell. So when a recently widowed Gil gets a long haul gig across the universe, he figured it's safe enough to bring his young son, Caden, along for the ride. And that's until their big rig gets bitten in half by a gigantic space leviathan. This actually sounds really, really cool. It's written by Jason Aaron, who we all know is an absolutely amazing writer. And uh, we have a variant cover by Mike Magnola, but they do not show that. Anyway, we have our art, some of our you know, interior art right here, which is really cool. It actually looks very colorful. And the dialogue seems to be really spot on. I'm thinking this book is going to be a really fun read. So, let's see. What else do we got here? Next up, another big one coming out. Unearth number one. This is from Colin Bunn. And Colin Bunn, this man is an amazing writer. And wow, yeah, this book sounds really cool. When a flesh-warping disease ravages a remote village in Mexico... A scientific task force travels to the inhospitable area to investigate the contamination. This, and it's all, it's supposed to be like some supernatural and all kinds of stuff. Now, if there's one thing Cullen Bunn does really well, it's horror. So this should be really cool. Wow, that cover A is amazing. I actually like the cover A better than cover B. Really excited for that. And again, some more really good artwork. We have some dialogue with some likable characters. I did take the chance or the opportunity to read this ahead of time. So I, this is one book I will not pass up. Here's another one that is sounding really good, and that cover is just creepy as. Boy, I love it. 
All right. The continent of Madaras once promised a new start for settlers, but 200 years after its discovery, the war rages on. Deep within this savage and untamed land, a darkness builds. At, or a darkness builds at that must be stopped at all costs. Now, that is some really weird wording there. Totally uncomfortable to read. To do so, the Imperials assemble six of his most despicable prisoners, a turncoat, a skin eater, a sorcerer, and his bodyguard, a serial killer, and the devil's son. That just sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I would recommend everybody jump on that as soon as possible. All right, let's see. Oh, Space Bandits, issue number one of five. That sounds like a really fun story as well. It looks really colorful, really bright. So excited for this one. And then, oh, sad days. The series finale of Paper Girls, issue number 30, written by Brian K. Vaughn. Now, Paper Girls is such a great series. I, I honestly don't know why this thing isn't bigger than what it really is. I can totally see this being optioned into a TV show one day. So, yeah, I would suggest everybody rush out and kind of grab your issues as you can. Uh, let's see. Let me jump ahead. Now, I believe we are now out of image and we are into... Burr, 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 Dark Horse Comics! Yes, you are reading this correctly. Jeff Lemire is bringing us Black Hammer slash Justice League. <laughs> that is one series I never thought I would ever see. It's going to be a five-issue mini coming out on sale July 3rd. DC and Dark Horse bring you the strangest crossover ever. A strange man arrives, arrives simultaneously on Black Hammer Farm and in Metropolis, and both war worlds are warped together. This, I don't even know what to make of this. I don't know if it's going to be good or not, but yeah, I got to read it. Yeah, that is just... And we got our variant covers down here, which look really, really cool. Some of them are neat. Wow, I like that. And we have some artwork and dialogue. Again, this, like I said, I don't know. I honestly do not know, but I have got to try it. And next up from Dark Horse, The Orville New Beginnings, issue number one of two. Now, if you guys haven't read Orville before, or, or actually watched the TV show Orville, it's a lot of fun. It's actually funny, it's smart, it's sarcastic, it's witty. It's a really, really good show. I'm expecting big things from the comic book. So, then we have Manor Black, issue number one of four, from the creators of Hiro County, County and the Sixth Gun. Again, Cullen Bunn, it's horror, must buy. And look at that. Dan Brereton variant cover, which looks really, really cool. Okay, where are we going to next? We are jumping ahead now. I believe we are out of Dark Horse, and that brings us to... IDW, and this looked really neat. H.G. Wells, The Island of Dr. Moreau, issue number one of two. Again, it's an adaption of the book, um, but I'm sure it's going to take some liberties to make it more, you know, comic fun. Cool, cool artwork. Man, you got to love this. Also coming up, we have Ragnarok, The Breaking of Helheim. And this is a Walter Simonson book coming out. Epic tale of Norse intrigue continues. And we're looking like we're going black and white. I love me some black and white artwork. Um, these are hardcovers. Or no, actually issue number one of six. Oh, they're offering the original hardcovers again as well. And trade paperbacks. 32 pages, five bucks. Good stuff. And that will bring us to... Oh, glow. Star Pig, issue number one of four. I just loved the name. <laughs> Although, uh, uh, Previews certifies it as cool, so it actually should be fun. Like many late 21st century teens, geeky 16-year-old Bess gets packed off to spend her summer at space camp, which is literally in space. Tragically, a shuttle accident sends her and the rest of her passengers careening towards a cold, frosty death among the stars. But then a giant spacefaring water bear miraculously rescues them. 
yeah, I, I, again, I do not know, but it sounds like it could be a lot of fun. All right, then we're going to jump ahead again to Dynamite Comics and this. We have Vampirella number one coming out with this absolutely beautiful Frank Cho wraparound cover. You can see the seam right here in the middle where the Dynamite logo is. So we have the front half and the back half. That's going to be worth buying just for that. I think this is going to be a hot seller. And because it's Dynamite Comics, your retailer is going to under-order it. <laughs> Uh, we have a lot of cool variant covers coming out for it, including an Adam Hughes one. All right, what do we got after this? Charlie's Angels versus the Bionic Woman. Now, I was reading the Charlie's Angels Dynamite series when it came out, I don't know, it was a year, maybe a year, or half a year ago. Excellent. It was really good. A lot of fun. Totally pulled me right into Charlie's Angels. So this will probably be a lot of fun as well. So that's going to be a must read. All right, so now we're going into Aftershock Comics. And this looks like a really good series. This is called Knight's Temporal Number One. When August de Reverie returned from the Crusades, he was ashamed and horrified by the things he had done. Hoping to reclaim his soul, he pledges to root out evil wherever it might be found. But when he is pursued by a vile sorcerer into a forbidden forest, his life was shattered. Actually sounds really good. Again, guys, I mean, you've seen a theme here. This is Cullen Bunn. This is horror. Buy it. Oh, and wow, Diamond is actually featuring this. So this is going to be a big read. We got here. We got some of the artwork they're pulling out here showing us. Looks really good. Again, got to read it. Got to, okay, let's jump ahead to the next section. And here we are in, why are we in this section? There must have been something here I liked. Oh, maybe it was Monster World down here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hey, Mega Ghost trade paperback coming out in July. Everybody needs to grab that. Mega Ghost was a extremely fun read. Down here, American Gothic Press. Showing us Monster World, the Golden Age. And uh, let's see, Private Detective Hank Barrymore stumbled upon the occult when he investigated a murder case on the World Studios movie set. Now it's his quest to find the witch he fell reluctantly in love with. So that actually sounds really fun. A lot of these small press indie books have been getting a lot of heat recently, and that's because they are great stories, great artwork, with really small print runs. I mean like minuscule, a couple thousand here and there for some of these books, which make them hot, hot, hot later on. So if you see a book that's an indie and it's a good story, chances are it's going to do something. All right, now from Aspen Comics, I usually don't spotlight a whole lot of Aspen because I usually just redo a whole bunch of Michael Turner stuff. But this is a Sia Ohm character, and this is Lola XOXO reaching its pivotal third volume coming out with the first issue number one. Lola XOXO has been a lot of fun. Most people have been enjoying this book. And uh, Sia Ohm has, is an amazing, amazing artist. Oh, so it just rocks. The artwork is so, so good. And then we jump ahead to Humanoids. Now, Humanoids is really kicking it in with some good books. First up, we have Strange Lands, issue number one coming out from Humanoids. Now, they announced they're doing an entire shared universe similar to Marvel and DC. So, all these books will eventually be crossing over. Adam Land, an indigenous American... Uh, and Alashki Land, a British Asian, have what some might call a love-hate relationship. They'd probably be better off without one another, except for the fact that they have superpowers that cause mass destruction whenever they are separated. So <laughs> that sounds like a blast. So here, Ignited Number Two. Again, Ignited Number One came out. Uh, it's already sold out. I can't find it anywhere. It's like gone. So they're offering it again right away. This is a monthly ongoing series, which the lives of six teenagers who become superpowered. So this should be a lot of fun. And 
let's see, where are we jumping to next? Oh, Red 5 Comics. Now this looks kind of interesting. We got a spotlight on one of their new books coming out called The Dark Age Number 1. Featured on Free Comic Book Day. So if you can find that, grab it. From the creator of The Rift, in the near future, all metal on Earth suddenly turns into worthless piles of rust and dust. With no technology, no guns, no computers, humanity reverts to a violent, feudal system. That sounds amazing. Like, it should be a really, really good read. So I'm excited for that one. And what do we got here? Starbusters number five. Oh, here we go. Red Winter number one. Again, this is Scout Comics. Scout Comics has been really, really hot for the last you know half a year, if not a little bit longer. Here's a new book coming out, Red Winter. Eli Winter is a former NYPD detective in his 50s and now living in Kaponia, the most crime-ridden district of Moscow. Eli is employed by the local crime boss, without whom Eli would likely be rotting in American prison. So, that actually sounds really interesting. Ah, let's see. And, of course, everything here from Scout. We have Star Bastard. We have Rise. Rise has been really good. And then we come down here to Source Point. Another company that has just been killing it recently is Source Point Press. And they are bringing us this month a Boston Metaphysical Society issue number one and Dead End Kids issue number one. Yeah, good stuff. In the year 1895, imagine an alternate steampunk history where ghosts and demons are normal. That sounds like it could be good fun. And then over here, Dead End Kids in 1999, Ben, Murphy, Tank, and Amanda are four screwed up kids from broken homes. But they've had each other. When Ben is murdered, Murphy and his friends set out to find who killed him and find them, them find themselves in the crosshairs. So that's what we have here. A dark coming-of-age murder mystery sent in the 90s. That sounds really good. Like I said, everything Scout Comics has been putting out has been a blast. So... Oh, what else do we got here? Oh, here's another one from Source Point. I'm sorry, Source Point. Not Scout, but Scout is awesome as well. So, hey, she offered love. This one sounded really good. Six weeks ago, Brian Thompson's daughter, Julia, was murdered, stabbed several times with a knife, and left for dead right outside her home. The police questioned her ex-boyfriend, Sean, but he was never charged. Brian, however, is convinced that Sean is the killer. He knows it, and he wants justice for his daughter. That sounds like an awesome... I love revenge stories, and that sounds really, 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 really good. So, I'm always good to, up for a good revenge story. Only a few more to show here. From Titan Comics, Blade Runner 2019, number one. First ongoing series to take place in the Blade Runner... Uh, the first original ongoing series to take place in the Blade Runner universe. So, very excited for those. We have a ton... Of variant covers, some really fun stuff there. I love Blade Runner. Oh, such a good movie. Oh, hey, Watch Dogs is getting a comic book. Yay. Let's jump ahead here. And from Valiant Comics, we have Killers number one. Five deadly assassins are recruited into a game of cat and mouse by the mysterious Jonin. Valiant puts out some really, really great reads. Good stuff all over the place. Rye, Bloodshot, Exo, Man of War. I mean, they are just live wire. Really good stuff. If you guys aren't on the Valiant bandwagon, you really, really should be. We have some good stuff coming out here. Oh, and they're actually featuring this as well. So this is going to be good. Oh, and they're offering a pre-order bundle. Now, if you don't know what the pre-order bundle is, the way it works that Valiant does... You walk into your local retailer. Let's say you walk into your LCS. You say, hey, I want killers. I want all four issues. I will pre-order them right now. So what your retailer does is they put they put your the killers down on your pull list, and they contact Diamond. They say, hey, I got a pre-order bundle here for order. 
what you get are four exclusive issues that are only available through the pre-order bundle. Sometimes they have variant covers. They always have extra content in them. The only way to do it is to go into your store now and tell your retailer you want them. They've done this for a lot of books, like they did it for a whole XO Man of War series. And, you know, it's really cool when they do stuff like that. All right, what do we got left? Um, that might be it. Oh, no, it's not. Last book. Vault Comics is bringing us Resonant, which a decade has passed since the first waves hit, unleashing humanity's darkest impulses and plunging the world into chaos. That actually sounds really good as goal as well. Vault Comics is putting about some neat stuff. And guys, whew, that's a lot of books for the month of July. Man, guys, get your wallets and credit cards ready because, man, there's some interesting stuff, some good stuff, some stuff that I have no idea about, but it looks crazy. I need to buy it. So, like always, guys, that's my preview spotlight for the month. If you like what you see, make sure you hit that little CV down in the lower right-hand corner. Hit the little bell notification up top. Give me some thumbs up. Give me comments. Let me know what books you're looking forward to. Even if I didn't spotlight them, let me know what you're looking forward to, and I will check it out. Anyway, guys, like always, thank you for watching, and take it easy.